So today we're gonna be talking about leverage and what it means in the real estate world. Welcome back my friends. Thank you for tuning in. It's always a pleasure having you here with me. As always, please feel free to like the video, hit that subscribe button and hit that bell icon. That way you get the notifications for the next video. And also you're helping the YouTube algorithm and helping me out grow this channel. So what is leverage exactly? Well, you can think of leverage as, let's use the example of changing your tire on your car. Well, if you wanted to change the tire on your car, you're gonna need the help of a car jack. Now using this car jack, that is the art of using leverage. So how does this apply to real estate investing? Now, when most people talk about leverage, it's usually referring to real estate in general. Now, whenever that term is thrown out there, it usually sparks the conversation of, you know, market conditions, home values, and risk tolerance. Now, everyone has their own opinion on it. However, in this video, I am just gonna be talking about what defines leverage and how it may be able to help you with real estate investing in general. Now, if you own a home, chances are you've already used leverage to your benefit. When you go to the bank and you want to get a mortgage on your house, that is leverage. You are leveraging the bank's money. So that's exactly what we're talking about here, guys, is you know maybe you've already done it once and the term leverage scares you, but why not try it again in a smart way? Now, what I'm talking about is obviously buying an investment property. So of course, this may scare people, especially in today's environment where we don't know if we're gonna see a market correction or not. However, if you've seen my other videos, there are smart ways to leveraging yourself. And let's just keep in mind, guys, with a rental property, there is still 20% equity in that home. And typically speaking, appraisals today are very, very conservative. So if you are leveraging yourself and buying an investment property, then of course, speak to a professional, whether that's a realtor and a mortgage professional, they will be able to guide you in the right direction. Now, of course, as a disclaimer, I would like to say that I'm not telling you to invest, I'm not telling you how to invest, I'm just telling you what has worked for me. In my opinion, leverage is key in many areas of success in our lives. In order to create success for yourself, you need to leverage other people's time, knowledge, and money. I personally love leverage specifically in real estate because every dollar that I put in, I get $4 from someone else, which creates $5 of real estate investments for myself. Now, if you don't believe me, let's just use an example comparing traditional investments such as stocks, you know, your RSPs, TFSAs, let's compare that to real estate. So let's use John as an, as an example. Let's say he's putting in $100,000 into his TFSA. You know, maybe he's investing in stocks, mutual funds, whatever it is. Let's say he's putting in 100,000 there, his own money, he's not leveraging anyone else's. Then we have, let's say, Rebecca. She is investing in real estate. She puts in $100,000 of her own money and she gets $400,000 from the bank. That's of course gonna buy her a $500,000 investment property. So now let's compare what this will yield them in 15 years time. Now for this example, let's use the same annual rate of return. It doesn't matter what number we use because it's st we're still gonna illustrate the same conclusion to this example. So let's say we have a 5% annual return for both investments and let's see where that takes us. Okay, so 15 years later, we have John's $100,000 turned into $207,000 with $107,000 profit. Not too bad, right? So now going back to Rebecca, in her 15 years of owning this property, it is now worth $1 million. That's the 5% return that we're talking about. Let's subtract her mortgage. So in that time, she has paid down her mortgage from 400,000 down to 200,000. So let's subtract that. And also let's subtract her initial investment of $100,000. This yields her a return of $700,000. Now you are probably sitting there thinking, you know, Rebecca is going to incur those capital gains when she sells that house. Well, although you are correct on that, I guarantee you that she is way further ahead than John after subtracting the amount of money that she's gonna pay on those capital gains. Also, another option Rebecca has is she doesn't necessarily have to sell that house in 15 years from now. She can simply do a refinance and take that money out tax-free. Now, with all that investment money that Rebecca now has, she is able to use that money to either pay for her kids' college and tuition, retire early, or you know maybe just take more vacations on an annual basis. 
So of course, if you have any questions about this or you wanna go through some more specific numbers, comment down below, I'd love to show you. And also, if you do wanna be more like Rebecca, feel free to reach out, I'd love to help you. Okay, so that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed that one and I'll see you guys on the next video.